and those who are one way or the other has benefited from it. Uh, I'm just here to give a short exhortation. Uh, see what the Lord has done, what he will do, and what we will reap from it. Amen. Yeah. So, in short, I would like to read from Psalm 126. Psalm 126. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And uh, we are glad. I didn't hear amen to that. Amen. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this is, this is a song of ascent. Um, and then studying through, it begins with thanksgiving, and after the thanksgiving, it follows with prayer. Then after the prayer, it follows with a promise when you study through the scripture. Now, from the verse 1 to 3, uh, the people of Israel, after coming back from captivity, look back at what the Lord has done to them. In fact, it got to a time to them there was no hope. Their hopes were shattered thinking that there's no way for them to come back to uh, Jerusalem again or Judah again. But in the long run, God has made it possible for them to come back. And therefore, it was so joy for them. Their hopes were shattered. Their hopes were just dwindled. Uh, they were not thinking of even coming back to Jerusalem, as of us, I've already said. But God made it possible for them to come back. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe uh, when this uh, organization was being started, maybe got to a time when all law hope was about to be lost. But today we believe that God has made this possible for us. Amen. 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 To make this organization stand on its feet. And we believe that it's going to stand on its feet. And greater things will come out of it. Amen. 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 Because the Lord is the foundation of this organization. So I'm here to, tell, to ask the Lord that we need funds to run this organization. And therefore we are praying that God should restore our fortunes. Amen. So that this organization can do great things. Amen. Amen. There are people out there who need help. These three children, those who are working, but those who are selling this, are what it, just as he said, instead of them being in school, they would rather be on the street selling ice water. On the long run, even after selling this ice water, some even go and sleep with hunger. Why? Because the monies have been collected from them without any payment. And it touches the hearts when you see such things going on. So we pray that the Lord will restore the fortunes of this foundation so that the foundation will be financially equipped and whatever vision they have, they will be able to carry it out. To carry it out, we will be able to carry it out. Hallelujah! Amen. Then he says that those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Hallelujah! Amen. In fact, farmers have do have a hard time so many times for them to sow. Why? They have to till the ground, uproot trees, find tractors to harrow the land for them. If you don't have money, you need to go in for a loan. All this, they go about it in anticipation that in the future, they will reap something better. Hallelujah. Yeah. So beginning with sowing is not easy. The sowing is not easy. But as we sow, as we work hard, 
we believe that surely in the future we will reap something. And that's what the psalmist was saying, that as they sow, those who sow in tears, they shall reap in joy. Hallelujah. When the harvest comes, they will reap in joy. Now, I remember when I was in the village with my dad uh, in the early 50s, when he was, you know, uh, clearing this forest to, you know, plant cocoa so that you have a cocoa plantation. And we we'll woke up, we we'll woke we'll up early as, early as 5, 4.30 a.m. Then we go to the farm, we'll be waking up to maybe 6 o'clock, especially when it's on holidays, when school are holidays. And sometimes we'll be crying, and so, oh, why is that the trouble, uh, uh, worriness like this? But now, if I go and I see the cocoa plantation, then I'm happy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I see the cocoa plantation, I'm happy. And even when it is cocoa season, and I go and I see this cocoa, the cocoa, uh, being dried on the shed, and I see it, and I say, no, really, we have done a great work, and it is time for the harvest. Hallelujah. In those times, we didn't enjoy it, but now my brothers and my sisters who are followed are now being taken to the university through that cocoa farm. But I didn't have that opportunity because we were starting it. Hallelujah. So we are hoping that in future, as we sow, this is the period of sowing, and the time is coming when we will reap. So we thank God for what the Lord has done for the five years. Our prayer is that the Lord will restore the fortunes of this organization. And as we sow, in future, we will reap in joy. God bless you for all the contributions that you have made, what you do, and what you continue to do to help this organization. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you very much, um, Reverend. Emmanuel Love Terry for that wonderful message. Indeed, I believe that the one who gives will never lack. Welcome Charles Zuta to give us the vote of thanks. The first thanks go to the Almighty, without whose blessing we wouldn't have seen today. And the second to our honorable chairman and all the blessed men of God that are surrounded him and all the great men that we have here today, we say thank you. Those of you that are members of Action Plus, our invited guests, I don't know, but I only say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you all for your time. We know in Ghana, today is Saturday. And many, many would have been here, but I know as you do, that funeral has taken many, many away. And if you, apart from all your busy shadows, you have been able to come here and spend this much hours with us here, we say may God bless you. Tomorrow morning, if you hear the cock crow, or the Muslims, the, uh, the Liman, Shouting for Don Prayer, Action Plus is saying thank you very much. God bless all of you. Can we be on our feet? Oh, it's all right. All right. Uh, please, uh, let's bow down our heads. 
we ascribe all glory and honor to your name. Father, we thank you for a successful gathering. A year by this time, we'll have more to celebrate. We'll have more to talk about. We'll have more to see. Lord, we say we thank you. Lord, we say we bless you. As we leave, we are not leaving your presence. But Lord, we believe that your presence will still be with us, will still go with us. And Lord, your mercies, your goodness will be our portion in this land of the living. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Even in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hello, please, your name? My name is um, Roy Aboku from Energy International Ghana Limited. Um, we would like to know whether you are part of the Action Plus Foundation or you are a partner. What role do you play? Um, we, are, we, Manage International, are part of this event as part of our corporate social responsibility. And we, we do take supporting foundations like Action Plus very seriously because we believe that is the way to give back to society as an organization, whatever we're taking out. So um, we're here today because we've now become partners of Action Plus Foundation and um, we support them in every event that, that they do. So basically that's our level of involvement. I know it's five years now. After six years or seven years, how do you see, where do you see this foundation going? Um, I would say that they have a very good vision because they are look, their core aim is to alleviate poverty in this part of the world. And as you can see, they have put together quite a number of projects. And from um, Reverend Speed, you'd realize that they've, they've now, they now have a piece of land which they are trying to put up a multi-purpose center to help train young people, to help empower women. Young, I mean, women who are single parents, women who would go a long way to support society. So I believe that in, in, in the next few years, this organization should be among the top ones that are in this, in this part of the world and supporting um, people who are in, in, in the category of the needy. There are other foundations out there. Uh, why this particular one? Why do you choose to support Action, Action Plus Foundation? Okay, I, I mean, Menergy as an organization is founded on Christian principles. We believe that everything comes from the Lord. And we are over 20 years old and we've, not, we've chalked numerous successes and we believe that it is by the support of the Lord that we've come that far and we realize that Action Plus Foundation is a Christian foundation you know apart from just being a charity they, they it is founded based on Christian principles and that is the basis on which we chose Action Plus yes as one of the organizations that we support We started Action Plus Foundation five years now, and we have been able to create awareness on HIV. We have been able to support those who are living with HIV, and then we have been able to develop projects to challenge and break stigma. And there are many people living with HIV who are now openly, you know, coming up and then doing more uh, supportive work in the community. We also have um, a project that we are now organizing to support um, vulnerable women, and then we are going to empower them with skills that they'll be able to set up small businesses. So Action Blast is um, a non-governmental organization, but it's, a, it's, it's about, a, about, about Christian way of living, whereby we want to alleviate poverty and suffering from the community. Yes. 
Um, you said earlier on that you were moved by passion, by what you saw, see around the streets. You see women carrying babies at the back and they're hustling on the streets trying to sell to earn a living. Uh, there are other organizations out there doing the same thing. What difference are you making? What will be the difference between what other organizations are doing and what you are doing? Um, the, the uniqueness of our organization is having uh, uh, the nature of Christ okay. in what we do. That's, uh, that, that, that's the main core. Okay. I mean, the passion of Christ when he was here, the way he demonstrated the love of God and had passionate, you know, for the suffering. That make a difference. Those others are doing very well on their own, but I see some uh, organizations as depending on them themselves. Yeah. But we don't depend on ourselves because it's a ministry, it's a calling which is accountable to God. Okay. Yes. So you depend on God. Mm. What is the, the vision for this foundation? What is the vision? Why Action Plus Foundation? Action Plus Foundation um, became Action Plus Foundation because um, when I came over to Ghana, as I was saying, in my mind I was coming to start a church. Yeah. But I came and saw that uh, church is not enough because we have a lot of churches around. Yeah. And we don't want to come and duplicate anything, but to pioneer. Okay. So that the love of God that Jesus left for us to, to look for the vulnerable people to let their lives change is that which has also made us to have what we have. So um, Action Plus Foundation has that name Action because we feel Action is our cutting edge. So wherever we are, we make up our mind that we'll be there to, to, to make changes in the life of people by what we give out, by the action we take, practicalizing the word of God. What keeps Action Foundation going on? How do you get sponsors? Which people give you funds to continue the, the good work you are starting? Um, Action Plus Foundation, with all that we have acquired, you know, the uh, the, the outcomes of all the things that we have put into the system yeah. has happened by the efforts that individuals in the organization have taken for all these years. And co corporate bodies and people who really want to help make Action Plus become what God wants it to be. But we haven't yet acquired any funding from any funding organization. So, I mean, we we are moving forward, but that is our lack, really. There's no funding coming from anywhere, no major sponsor at all, not even in this country or even in the UK or anywhere in the world. We have to, you know, do all that we can to move forward. And so that is our uh, present need, really, to get major sponsors to come and sponsor the work we do. How do you see the foundation uh growing after let's say after after six years or after seven years it is five years and five yeah. years anniversary that you had today mm -hmm. so after six or seven years how do you see this foundation going people start and they can't continue what would you do like i said um every vision that god gives you grows god starts small and then it grows so we we, we could see the growth the enlargement and the increase coming every day but we give ourselves time that within the five years of our, you know, established existence, we'll be able to put some, I mean, practical things, statistics, into into its right perspective, and grow by building a strong foundation, and then from there, now we start to build on the foundation. So for the next five years, it's just building and making sure that the growth is going to bring increase to be able to, you know, move not only in Ghana or UK, but to reach out into the world as well. So within these five years, we want to see ourselves becoming a global organization. Yes, yes. So what, what advice will you give individuals out there? Um, if I say advice, all that I can say, um, also basing strongly on our Christian faith and our, our belief, Jesus said to the disciples that they should go and do that likewise. When uh, the priest and the Levite has left this young man dying and they couldn't support him. And then the Samaritan came and then 
helped him and then was able to, you know, lift him to another level. And Jesus said, he did well. So our advice that I feel I can give, I mean, it goes to the church, which I am part of. That the time I've come that suffering is real. There are a lot of people in the church who are suffering and they are looking for help okay. from somewhere and they can't get it. But we need to take care of our own. That is the church. The church okay. on our own. And as we do that, they can live well for Christ. Physically, spiritually, they'll be able to serve God. But if we don't take care of them and we leave them and then they, 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 they suffer, that pain, God one day will ask us, yes, that why didn't you take care of them? Because those who did took care of them, he will tell them good and faithful servants. So if we want to really um, make Christ uh, commission to become a reality, we should also look at when he comes to meet us being faithful by taking care of the very vulnerable that is among us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Reverend Osei, God bless you for the good work you are doing.